Oh, this is going to go swimmingly. <laughs> uh, if this goblet survives, it'll be a miracle. <laughs> well, I think we're live. Good evening, everybody. How are you? And welcome. I say, I think we're live. <laughs> nah, it's not. Oh, 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 it's going live. It's going to go swimmingly. <laughs> <laughs> What's happened now? Ah, there we go. Somebody needs to mute their tab. There we go. Good evening, everybody, and welcome. Um, just a two or three minute little introduction before uh, I go properly live at seven o'clock. It's nice to see you all. And uh, I'll say a quick hello to, uh, of course, and I'll go through who the earworms are in a minute. So welcome Richard, Dave Oti, Richard Phelan again, Stuart, hello, good evening and welcome. And uh, <coughs> Mark Pritchard, hello Mark, Tony Eastham, and if I, Jeff Cron, good evening to you sir, and welcome. Tipsy Turner, good evening. And Robert Buch Buchanan, good evening to you and welcome. Joseph King. Well, you can get out straight away. Good evening, Joseph. <laughs> Terry. Just good evening, Terry Bartlett. How are you? Martin Gentleton. Good evening to you. And just a basic. Good evening to you too. William Kenny. Hello. And Joe Pitt. Roger Woods. Paul Stafigins. Jennifer. Lady Jennifer. Good evening and welcome to you as well. Right. What's happening tonight? Well, we're going to be turning a um, a spalted beach goblet, hopefully one piece. And uh, I'll go through all this again at 7 o'clock. And what will happen is anybody that joins after I start the official live, one of the lads will be on hand to welcome you. And at the moment, I've got the one and only um, Pete Twisted Trees. And I've got a fella called St uh, 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 oh, uh, Brian from um, yeah. Hartwood Turnin. And Thanks, we've got, mate. we're joined as well by Mr. Ed Oliver. Um, but I have a few things I want to say when everybody is joined. And we've also got Terry from TJ Turning coming hopefully later on. And there might be a bit of a break where I try and he's get in. The shower in, and make in. It at the he's, he is. Uh, it is not, a, you know, that could actually ruin my future because it's not a nice thought at all. Ask me the main bleach. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. So let's put that over there. Just bear with me a second. It's been a while since I've done this. And as the lads will say, I've messed up already a few times. Nothing too just, major. Just just once or twice already. Just just once or twice or three times. Oh, you'll be fine. Right, right. Normal amount. <laughs> okay, let's move. Oh God, let's move that to there and move that to <gasps> there. And I'll be with you in a minute. Just bear <clears> with me. Okay, let's have that. Yeah. Joseph is asking if you're going to do some captive rings on this goblet. Yeah, uh, well, Joe, um, a straight answer, my friend. No. Um, <laughs> don't know what else to say to you, really, Joseph. Um, Ed, Ed I, keeps I really, into his, uh... Yeah, I really wanted to, but unfortunately, considering you keep asking for it, I'm not going to. Okay, it's seven o'clock. So we are now officially live. And uh, good evening and welcome to everybody on this very warm evening, or relatively warm evening. Um, tonight I'm joined by Pete Twisted Trees, if you bear with me a second. We've got two Pete's, his, his, his twin brother is here as well, and uh, <coughs> Brian J. Usby from... Uh, was it Brian? Brian and Hart were turning. That's right. That's uh, the keep, one. Keep yeah, that's the one. Yeah. And all right, mate. I was special guest earworm. I don't know why I put special in front of that. Is Mr. <laughs> Ed Oliver of Oliver's Wood Turning. Now, Ed Oliver is an RPT. Hey, it's, it's the first RPT I've ever had. Now, normally, RPT stands for Registry of Professional Turners. But in Ed's case, it is an actual fact stands for really poor turner and 
you know, it's it, we know each other pretty well, so Ed knows I'm being dead serious when I say that. So uh, thank you for joining us, Ed. Um, today, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure I will be I, I doing... Do, I do have to say one thing here. Yes, Pete. Um, um, I, think I think Brian and I are redundant because Ed's, Ed's got enough insults to um, keep the entire show on a roll. I hope he has. I hope he has, actually. <laughs> but uh, I'm sure Ed won't be insulting and uh, take the mickey because he's not that sort of guy. You know, he's just a. If you have any questions, please ask them in the chat and one of the lads will answer. And if you've got a question directly for me um it doesn't matter if i'm no, turning no, um, the lads will relay it to me Ed, is that one of my special goblets Ed's got one of your As, goblets, uh, mike walks goblet yeah <laughs> mike walks goblet here <laughs> uh, that, that actually is quite similar to a lot i've got <laughs> yeah, very got nice echo. we've got some echo we got echo he, he got into coloring he used colored tape <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, we got an echo on YouTube, have we? Uh, uh, no, it's Pete's. Yeah, yeah, that's because oh, there's two Pete's here, that's why. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I don't know how to get rid of him. Well, I do, but it won't be very nice. Just turn Just off, turn off window, that window, but. Ah, NDI. Uh, ah, I see. Your NDI E and F, Pete. Yes, yeah, so yes, yeah, so just hide, hide F. I'll just hide F. Well, I want to hide it. I'll just. Knock it off. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Just close a little light. Shall I? Shall I get rid of F then? Yeah, just close, just the, close eye the eye on it. He's confused now. I can tell by the look in his face. <laughs> There's no eye on mine. That's not hard, is it? Yes, yes. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah. In in, in, in uh, uh, sources. sources, you got you got. Uh, All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. NDIF and block it off. You should disappear then. Yeah, yeah. I haven't, I haven't yet. Well, you you haven't, but oh, hang on, hang on a minute. Right, that's it, that's it. Yay! Okay. Right, we'll get there. We'll get there. Thank you, thank you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, tonight we are going to be turning, hopefully a spalted beach a gobelet e uh, there are a few hairline cracks i've noticed so it could be interesting and i'm sure nobody would want me to have a flying goblet this evening but uh, however so as i say any questions um put them in the chat uh, either one of the lads will answer or indeed if it's for me personally it doesn't matter if i'm turning they will relay the question and i will answer it straight away um and as you know, I normally talk through my turning, and hopefully Mr. Oliver will interrupt when and when and how he feels. Uh, but hopefully he's not too derogatory to my turning skills, such as they are. Okay, so first thing to do, what I've done, I found the center. I use the uh, center finder. I've got a step center, drive center in my chuck and I've also got a revolving step center at the tail stop. They are my preferred method of holding spindles. Okay, one thing to, for the turner with less experience, when you're actually finding the center and using a center finder, leave the center finder in the same place and turn the piece corner to corner. Don't turn the center finder. Just a little tip. Okay, so I'm going to be using my spindle roughing gouge just to turn this to round. And another, not a word of warning, but another bit of advice. When turning something like Spalted Beach, always wear a respirator. I normally do, but obviously you wouldn't be able to hear my dulcet tones, um, which might be an advantage. <clears throat> okay, uh, the piece no bad, is... No bad, thank you. <laughs> no comment. Uh, the piece is two and three quarter inches at the moment by eight. Mm -hmm. By the time we put a tenon on there, the goblet should be about oh, you know, seven and a half inches, or it might be two, two and a two Five three and a half if we're lucky. <laughs> yeah, okay. So I'm going to be turning. Everything is locked down and checked. Just doing, just on 2000, 2000 RPM. 
and start to just round the piece off. Well, I haven't turned for quite a while, so this could be interesting too. Oh. <laughs> sure. And don't forget, when you start to knock the corners off, bring the tool rest in a bit, not far to go, and also check your moorings as well to make sure everything is nice and stable. An important thing is when you're doing this is not to use your hands or your arms if you like, is move across the work with your body so that you're locked in one more and that should be basically it it doesn't have to be exactly because most of it's going to be gone in the stem anyway so we're not going to be too worried We've got Mark Gentleman Wood who has joined us on his 71st birthday celebration. Hello. <laughs> He's gone up, I tell you what, his age has gone up a lot in the last 24 hours, hasn't it? Yeah, he's getting on a bit. Yeah. Okay, that's got to be... His age. That's got to be good enough for what we want. There's a lot of background noise going on somewhere. I don't know where that is. It's... Oh yeah, it's just me and the beer. Sorry? What is that background noise? Not me. Just in my is office. It, is it Ed? Myself. What background noise? Ah, that's, uh, that's it. It's not there now. I wonder... I knew it had to be you. It had to be you causing problems. Not me. Not me. Well, how come it's gone? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me that. I don't know. Someone must have pushed on me. I've got no control over this whatsoever. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Your background noise. Right. Yeah. If if you stop there, that piece of wood looks quite nice. Go and get something else to bagger up. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, okay. That's a good idea, actually, Ed. Um, <laughs> oh, 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 send that. Is that all right? Shall you make a very yeah. thin goblet? How's that? <laughs> That's probably back uh, up. Thank you, Ed. Um, I did tell you people that... Uh, Ed won't get up. Won't, won't, won't be upsetting me. Okay, so the next thing I like to do is to put a, a, a tenon on to get it in the chuck, and I'm using uh, one of my two favourite sets of jaws, and that's the uh, medium gripper jaws. They're serrated in and out. It's a uh, a straight tenon, not a dovetail, and they've got really good holding power, especially on wet wood, which this is not. However, okay, so I'm just going to. Just clean up that edge. Don't really need to, but I like to do it. Just using the parting saw. And Ben German has joined us, so let's now change into walnut. Sorry. A piece of wood just turned into walnut because Ben German has joined us. Yeah, it yes. could be wall it could be walnut, but it's not, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> it could be a lot of things actually. Now the thing is with these tenons, normally I would use my calipers, just to make sure, between 56, 58 mil, and this is just going to fit. I've done it by eye because you can see with the um, with the you know with the with the jaws being so close, you can actually eyeball it, which is an advantage to make it a little bit longer. Make sure the shoulder's nice and square, and make sure that the tenon is not as too deep so that it falls on the back of the jaws, because you want it to be tight up against the front of the jaws to get a good hold. Now what I like to do, when I've taken out the live centre... Well, Alex of Wooden Things has just joined us, and he's, he's, he's a bit confused, Mike, because he says... Yeah. Evening all. Good to see you back, Mike. 
That's very nice of you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you think my back's better than my front? Is that what you're trying to say? He's a bit, he's a bit confused. <laughs> <laughs> Steve Fleming's got a question for Ed. He said, "When are you going to join another life?" No, what you've done. What I've Possibly done, next month. Oh, great! We can't wait, Ed. Actually, um, can't wait for the month after when it's over. Right. Um, what I like to do before I tighten the jaws up is bring up the tail stock. Again, this is for the turner with less experience. Uh, I just apply a little bit of pressure just to make sure it's centered. Because quite often, when you make a tenon and you put something in the chuck, it's going to be slightly off. So just loosen the jaws slightly, a bit of pressure. Just get that shoulder up nicely against the front of the jaws and then tighten down. And then that should run fairly true. Okay. So, we'll just run it. Mark's uh, confused because he said we all know Mike needs as much horsepower as he can get. Yeah, that's true. But we all know that Simon sold you this lathe because it's sheep power, not horsepower. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> sheep power. Right. So, the first thing I like to do, there are many ways of turning a goblet, obviously, but the method I like to use is to just get a, a basic shape on the, on the bowl part, and the bowl will be approximately a third. So, it's a third, a third stem, and then the base. That's approximate. But it does depend, obviously, how long your goblet is, whether that sort of third, third, third is going to work. So, what I've got to do now is just a basic shape here, and be because he's going for a third base, Brian. Sorry, oh, what have we done now? He's going for a really thick base on this one. Oh, no, I, I, I'm doing one that way. I'm not doing a concave. I'm doing Brian's convex special. I bet, you, I bet it's a convex base. Yeah. I bet you it is and all. Okay, so <laughs> I'm going to say approximately here. So what I'm going to do is start. I've got a half inch spindle gouge. You could use a bowl gouge, a th uh, three eighths bowl gouge, if you wish. Just to just take a bit of wood away and have a look and sort of see what it looks like. We want to keep as much. Wonderful people in. Welcome everybody. Just do it. Just join us. We could do with a bit more speed. That's better. Okay, so again, just nice light cuts. Gonna have it coming in a little bit at the entrance, and then just get the basic shape. Somebody Who is working in the background. Somebody's working in the background. <laughs> I can hear things get moved about in the background somewhere. Oh, I can too. Yeah. It's not Terry in the shower, is it? <laughs> I sincerely <laughs> I sincerely hope not. Now because of that's the gonna be the basic shape, okay? Nothing fancy because in this case I hate to say this, but whoever is clearing up or doing something in the background, and it's got to be either Pete or Ed. I'm sitting here very quietly. Yeah. Can you hear? Uh, can you hear it? Ed? In an office. Can you hear it, Ed? No, I can't hear anything. I can hear the it, bell. Yeah. That's really weird. Really weird. Yep. Can you hear it, Pete? Yep. The chat can yeah, hear it. It's stopped now. Uh, okay. It might be as I turn my neck. I've got a neck mic on. Uh, you, you should have had a shave, Ed. You've obviously got too much stubble. Okay, so the because the wood is a, a really pretty wood, I don't want to do any fancy shapes like, you know, like a, 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 um, a trumpet shape or anything like that because I want to maintain as much of this grain as possible. So that's going to be my basic <laughs> shape. And what I will do now is to hollow out to the depth I want. 
do a depth hole with the spindle gouge and then hollow out and then do the refining afterwards. I like to get the inside finished and sanded uh, with a finish on it and I leave as much meat here for stability for the hollowing. So we will now remove, this is, this is where things, when you're doing a goblet, this is not too long. Uh, but if it's a longer goblet, this is where you have to be wary because of um, the distance you are from the tail, uh, the headstock. Okay, so I'm just going to face this off just to straighten it up. Just check the, just check it again. Steve Fleming wants to know, is this going to be a two or a three part goblet? Well, th this is the exciting bit. We don't know. Nobody knows until such time as it happens. Okay, so I'm now going to... <laughs> and Jerry Dempsey has come in to join us. Good evening, Jerry. Good evening, Jerry, and welcome. I'm now going to just do a depth hole. So you want your spindle gouge horizontal, dead on centre. Just there, like that. And then it's not a bad idea just to take a skew and just make a little dent in the middle. Like so, just to get you started. It's not essential, but it's handy. So that's the depth we want. So you, you plunge in, slide it at an angle, and then Uh, right, what's that? Are you with a skew? No. I'm just plunging in with the 3 8 spindle go. You have a camera change, Mike, so we can see the end. Yep. So what I'm doing, I'll just turn off a second. You start off um, slightly at about sort of uh, one o'clock just to get your entry, but you need to be really in the middle and you want to be plunging in straight. So that will give you, we've got in so far, I want to go down to about there. That's the distance, I'm. that's the depth I'm looking for. You can do this with a drill as well. And keep bringing it out. Now you notice that if you start like this, you're not going to get you're not going to get a cut. You have to turn it virtually completely open to get the cut. But be, as I say, be wary that your tool gets extremely hot, as well as you need to be on that straight and narrow. Otherwise, you could get a catch. Okay, so now I'm just going to face face the front. Not essential. Yes, things that's very warm. So we'll change back to the half inch spindle gauge for a minute, which is what I gotta do my hollowing with. You could use a three eight spindle gauge, should you so wish. Okay. But my preferred tool for hollowing is a half inch. Now, if you haven't got a half-inch spindle gouge, you could use a half-inch, uh, a three-eighths bowl gouge would be adequate. But the three-eighths is quite good, but it's less stable than the half-inch. So why not use the more stable tool? Okay, so we're going to start off with um, back hollowing, which is basically placing the, the left, just to the left of the nose, and just swinging the handle. So, uh, Dale Slaughter was late and he wants to know what kind of wood it is, Mike. Sorry, what? Dale Slaughter yeah. has joined us. He wants to know what kind of wood it is. Ah, it's spalted beech, Neil. I'll just stop it so you can see it, Neil, before, as Ed said, before I ruin it. 
you can see what lovely figure there is on that. Now, the thing is with Spalted, <laughs> you can see on the front here, there's quite a bit of punkiness. We're not, I've got to do a finish, obviously, but it's not going to be perfect because what I would normally do with that, and you can't tell always with uh, Spalted Beach until you actually get into it, um, how it's going to, how it's going to end up. So what I would do there is put either wood hardener on it or uh, some sanding sealer, neat sanding sealer, just to stiffen up the fibres to give you a, a fighting chance of getting what I would term a decent finish. So all you're doing is just swinging your handle, keeping it on the same plane as when you start your cut. Because what tends to happen is, and if I can go to that for a second, oh, is that any good? Yeah, what tends to happen is, it, no, that's not very good either. But if you start on a plane like this um, and you're getting your cut, and if you start to look down to see where you are, your hand drops. So you're going to come off the cut. So it's an important thing to remember to keep it, once you get that cut started, you want to keep it on the same plane throughout the cut. Now you're not going to get a, a really good um, finish off the tool, but it gets rid of wood very effectively. So just work, work, work your way down. Now that, that noise you're hearing is me coming off the cut because I'm trying to get out of the way of the camera <laughs> which is not a problem because that camera isn't actually being used the one I'm trying to keep out of the way of. Now you can see that you're moving quite a bit of wood. Now, I don't know if you can imagine when you're turning a bowl, and there are good bowl turners on here, me not included, what tends to happen when you get that noise, what it is, I'm not coming round enough. I'm not swinging the cut. So what's happening is it's starting to rub and, as opposed to cut. I think I can lower lower the tool rest ever so slightly. Mark three's boy is going down the pub. Who? Mark. Mark? Oh yeah, you do yeah. that, Mark. You you oldies have to keep uh, now the thing is I don't know if that will show it so well I'll be doing a pull cut well I quite like using a push cut as well which is like a bowl if you like and that has two effects number one is you can see what you're doing and number two you get a better finish but the problem is that this is a 45 degree bevel so when you get quite deep you're going to be cutting literally without bevel support when you're going around that bottom so a lot of care is needed but it's not a big problem because I'm going to use my negative rake scraper anyway just to refine that inside I'll stop and have a look not too shabby there's a, a question there from Ken yeah uh, says, why are you using a spindle gouge rather than a bowl gouge to hollow out? This is a half inch spindle gouge. Where, where are we there? This is a half inch spindle gouge. Um, and it's obviously much meatier than a three eighths. And I, it's just habit, I suppose. You could use, you could use your three eighths bowl gouge if you so wish. 
Um, you could use a half inch bolt goad if you want to, but I find that this um, does the job for me. And it is end grain, so spindle gauge is appropriate. And poor Buster West has got to go. He has to play taxi driver for his family. Oh, hi, Buster. See you, Buster. What I'm trying to catch up. Right. What I'm doing here is just feeling inside to see that the walls are relatively even for me. So you can imagine this is just a little wall. Thick wool goblet, then. You what, mate? It's a, a what? Thick wool goblet. Thick. No, thick, thick. I'm finished. I'm finished yet. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> You see, I'm going the thing to is, we've got uh, Pedro Rodriguez from Portugal. Hello there, how uh, are you? And welcome. Somebody else from Chicago as well, but can't find him there. And Woodward Paul's in as well. Hello, Paul. Welcome. Okay, so we have now and got the bottom. Ash, at Kate, Ash from Katie Shed's in as well. We have 127 people watching. Good grief. Welcome to all of you. And I'm sure most of you are here just to see it fly off the lathe, but never mind. It doesn't matter. Okay, so I'm fairly good down to about there. It's just the bottom, and this is where I tend to use my negative rake scraper. You can use an ordinary scraper. There are various me um, methods of achieving. And the only reason I'm trying to get it as smooth as possible, it cuts down on the sanding. So there's my 35-35 um, negative rake. I'm using it that way up, and the reason I do that is because that's where the sinus so I know I've got to raise the burr from the lower bevel to raise the burr here, and that's the bit I'm going to be cutting. What I like about the negative rake scrapers um, is that they are, and I'll prove myself wrong, they are much more forgiving than an ordinary scraper and a bit more user friendly. However, because they have a 35-35, the edge won't last as long as an ordinary scraper. I see you then. As is uh, Ryan Hope. Ryan Hope. I'm drawing the line. And that should... Yeah, that's good. That's not too bad at all. A little bit more on the bottom. It's always a bit boring, actually, when you're... Well, I'm boring anyway, but when you're doing um, hollowing, <laughs> it, it, it's not a spectator sport. Uh, Tom, Tom Coker's just come in and said, Happy Resurrection, Bill. Does he think you've just been resurrected, Mike? Well, uh, he's just... I did, I your life is all right. I mean, he's I not did, bad. I didn't want to say too much. No, I'm resurrected, but he's still been dug up. Oh, God. <laughs> I tell you what. What I can't believe, ladies and gentlemen, is how quiet Mr. Oliver is at the moment. I wonder if he's just waiting for the right moment. I don't know. Yeah, he can't get a word in edge. I'm sorry. Sorry, I'm asleep. Oh. 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 Okay. I'm I reckon you turn my mic off. Oh, uh, that's what it is. No, it's on. Yeah, unfortunately, oh, unfortunately, we can Andrew hear Green. you, Ed. Yeah. All I'm doing now... Mr. Walt. Yeah, all, uh, let me just An try Andrew and get this little nub out of the way. Anthony Green has a question. Who? Sorry? Anthony Green. Yes, says, Anthony. Did you, shape, did you shape that negative rake scraper yourself? Yes, I did. Or can't you buy them like that? Um, you can buy negative rake scrapers ready done. Simon Hope sells a good range of them as well. Uh, on goblets, I just happen to like this particular one, and um, this is a, um, I think it's a three-quarter inch, is it, or is it a one-inch? No, it's a one-inch. It, it started life as a, let's go back here, it started life as a uh, one-inch roundo scraper, so it looked like that, basically. That was, and all I did is... <coughs> change the profile 35 35 now even on this one i've got a very small relief uh because i'm a coward i just think negative rate scrapers are much easier to use and leave a really good finish so uh, they're great for beginners and old timers like me as well so i think the main advantage of a negative rake is 
the tool holding position is much more consistent with other tools. Yes. And you don't have to change your tool rest and so on and so forth. No, once you once you, once you get the once you get it moving, once you get it cutting, you're there. Um, and as I say, if you happen to be slightly wrong, you can get a catch, obviously, but it's much more forgiving. Not quite as brutal as a um, an ordinary scraper can be. But it's personal preference. And never put your fingers in a revolving goblet, by the way. And start. It... <laughs> I'm not doing it. It's not my finger. <laughs> my wife said she'd never come on camera, you see, so I'd just use a finger to check the nub at the bottom of my goblets. Ah, that's right. Yeah, that's right then. Yeah. I hope it's still it's, attached to our hand. Uh, well, it's not actually. I just got. I got a. I got a bit, bit of dough. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, it, it actually came off the first time she tried it. Right, that's got rid of everything down there, and we've got a nice, nice surface for sanding. So, my next, um, the next job. Let's go back to me. The next job I like to do is to finish the inside. In other words, sand and sand and deliver. So we'll do that very quickly. Um, we think we could start there at 180. I say this is a demo. It's not. It's not going to be um, a perfect finish. But uh, not that I ever get a perfect finish before Ed Oliver says anything. Um, Beat me to that. Yeah. Well, there we go. What's happened there? Oh, it's the wrong one. No, it's not. Extractor stopped working. Why is that then? Oh, Excuse. talking about things not working, my compressor packed up today. Oh, yeah. oh hell, that's nasty. So yeah, why it just you... died. Oh. It, made a few, it made a few funny noises and stopped. Oh, you know, I know why, because the plugs come out, that's why. Oh, maybe that's See, it does, it does help, doesn't it? Oh, you've got a bit of power, yeah. Yeah, it does. Well, I just lit the fire pit to get rid of last week's turnings. Oh, you did not. <laughs> okay, oh, so no, again, no, no, lovely square bolts. What you mustn't forget with the gobbler is because it's sort of near the centre of your um, near the centre of the spindle, if you like, you can you can quite easily um, sand at a higher RPM than you would a bowl, for example, because obviously you've got the outer part of the bowl spinning much quicker than the center. But with a with a goblet, it's running relatively very slow as you go down to the middle. Now the reason I'm doing this. What's that? Forty grit, Mike. Uh, 20. 20 grit. 20. That's yeah, give, a good way to start. Give me a break. Uh, this is a good time for me to actually show what I do more often than not now. Uh, is not hand sand. If the goblet is wide enough, I tend to use um, my drill with a 37mm arbor on it with a pad. Where are we there with a pad and then you can you can use that you can get to the bottom nicely your fingers aren't in the way and you also negate any radial marks and I've got to a stage now uh, and I, yes I know I don't do a lot of turning at the moment but I've got to a stage now where I use either my inertia sander or power sand in every situation I can and basically it's because of radial marks. I'm on about a spindle now uh, as opposed to a bowl but on a spindle if I can get my uh, sanding arbors in there I will use them. So that Move is... Two marks past you as well. Sorry? I think they will move two marks past you as well. The same. Yeah, that, that, that's the main reason I use it, Ed, is to get rid of the tool marks. And, uh, the, you know, the, the poor turning. Oh, yeah, I agree. 
But, you know, any any port in the storm, Ed, you know. <laughs> you you taught me that in the early days. But um, <laughs> I, I firmly believe, I mean, I'm not a professional turner. I know, I, I know it's hard to believe. But um, the thing is, with us amateurs and the, uh, the guys that do it for pleasure, not, not as a living, um, you, you, speed is not a problem. You, you don't have to get things out. You're not a production turner. So any method you use and you're getting a good result, use it. You know, it might not be the most efficient way of doing things, especially if you say you're doing 10 of these, for example. Uh, if I did 10 of them, one might come out in one piece. You don't know. There's always that chance. Okay, so that's 240. Now I shall... Is this the best uh, camera, Pete? Yeah, it's done yeah. on the sanding. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Got a question on the sanding. Have you done sanding soft pads for that uh, rig you've got there? Yeah, it's basically a larger pad. I just cut it to fit the 37mm. Um, yeah, but it does the super soft, like the red pads. That are yes. Uh, yeah. 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 Might fit the profile better. That's what I got on there, you see. That, that's why I like it, because it, it goes in there, because it's quite a tight curve at the bottom, um, and it gets in there nicely. And this is the... I'm not promoting it as such. This is the extension from Simon Hope, and these just slot in. So you can change easily, and they obviously fit any arbor size. Okay, so, uh, sanding sealer. And then... We'll let that go off and ask, answer any questions you might have. You haven't got any. Now, with a goblet like this on the inside, I tend to put it on with the lathe stopped. Because it catches... The wood, the wood dude has a question. Yeah. He says, Ed, is it too late to set up some woolen knitting needles? <laughs> Well, it's not that good at knitting either. I can prove that. I've got a woolly hat. Yeah, I have indeed. We've seen it. <laughs> yeah, I, I think you're right, actually, because I can actually prove you're right there, Red. That's one of the knitting needles I used. Um, I, just, I think I was putting too much pressure on the wool, but it was. No, you it, around corners. Yeah, and it's tough wool, you know, but um, yeah, you're right, Ed. Uh, knitting, I'm not very good at either. There you go. Yeah, right, it don't even fit. Let's <laughs> go back to the main view, Mike. I'm sorry? Let's go back to the main camera view. Main Skype camera. View. It's, your, it's modelling the hat. All right, okay. Hang on. I got the hat. It don't fit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you knitted it a bit too big. Yeah, I, uh, my, yeah. Wife, my, my wife That's knitted that for me. Yeah, you can do, Ed, yeah. I think what it is, your head's got a bit bigger now, so we'll have to let a few stitches out, you know? Is that what you're trying to say? My head shrunk. Oh, no, shrunk. shrunk. Now it's too big. Your head will never shrink, Ed. That does suit you, though. I think, personally. I'll say to everybody that's watching that don't know, Ed is actually, well... <laughs> I'm a good friend of his, okay? Um, <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, so we'll let... <laughs> Sorry, Ed. Love you really-ish. Okay, so let the sanding sealer go off a bit. And I'm not going to talk too much apart from when I'm turning because I want to try and get this finished. Well, that make a change. Yeah. Well, you just beat me to that, Ed. <laughs> Person, I don't believe it. It's it's nice yeah, to be loved, be apparently. Right, Mark Baird has a question for you, Mike. <laughs> yes, Mark Baird, B A I D. Hi, Mark, and welcome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Says, how are your eyes doing? They're doing fine, mate. Really doing well, thank you. As you can see, as I'm doing the inside of this goblet, it's really they're working really well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're fine, mate. Thank you. They are they are good. <clears throat> I Ed can't. says he can't see the tool marks, but never mind, that's not... No, well, I put some... He said, is that a Scooby Pro Edge sharpening system in the background? Yes, it is. Never yeah. seen anybody use one. Oh, yeah. sure. There we are, Mike there it is. It. There it is. <laughs> um, Mike has done a video of 
specifically sharpening with it. So yeah. if you yeah, look back through my previous videos, you'll find one there. And uh, Pete did a, a, a video on it as well, um, on a special alteration yeah, you I, can do. I need yeah. five months, you have to do 40, 40 grand. But they're, they're a bit like hen's teeth at the moment, are they not, Mr. Oliver? <laughs> ben, um, Jalman says, ben Jalman says, I can see torn grain next to that tool mark. Yeah. <gasps> um, oh, I, spe I specialise in that, Ben. That is my trademark. Poor we're, tool. we're in trouble now. We're in trouble now, buddy. Paul Gavin is in. Oh. <laughs> So I thought, well, get the upgrade. Ed, um, Ed, we can hear you. <laughs> John M has just joined us. He says hello, everyone. Beautiful Hi, day John. Here. Welcome. Ohio. Oh, welcome. Welcome. I don't know. I can't hear it. I can't hear it. I can hear you, Ed. We can hear you, mate. Yeah. Clomping, clomping around. I do apologise. I, I told you, ladies and gentlemen, that you know Ed was a really poor turner. He's also a really poor earworm. But um, there you go. Uh, no, no, no. Hold on, I'm back. I have oh. to go. Oh, I'm better. trying to find another set of uh, headphones and microphones because someone's saying the. Sound it, is muffled. It, it's not yeah, that. Yep. It, it's fine. I've got a feeling you might be working off a camera mic, not that headset. Because when you when you left to set your headphones down, we could still hear you talking. Yeah, it was it was. Ah, pretty... right. Well, I I should. I'm only on a Bluetooth headset. Ah, right. Did you, have you got your put your is your camera mic on? No, I don't think so. I'm just checking that, but I don't All think right. so. Okay, while well, Ed's sorting out his technical issues, just to let the uh, the viewers know, um, with Yorkshire Grit, which most of you will know, you just keep working it in until the grit part of the abrasive character of the Yorkshire Grit comes to nice and smooth, which it is now. And I just leave it a couple of seconds, and then you can put your final finish on. Uh, and that shows quite a nice finish anyway. And they're, they're shadows, not tool marks, but uh, which is very strange for me, must be said. Okay. So, Hampshire okay. Sheen, high gloss. <laughs> that, I'm definitely on just Bluetooth. Um... Okay, not too much needed. And you could just put a less is more with any wax. Don't tell Martin I said that. Um, and work from the center to the outside as you would with a bowl, which then will release. <laughs> See, we can actually hear you open that packet. We can, we can hear everything. Eddie. Yeah. It, I'm trying to find another mic. Yeah, oh, it's, I'm here. It's not so have a Mike Walt I'm trying to find. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to find a replacement for Mike Walt. Um, well, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's not very really nice. I thought you were on my side, Pete. Obviously got that wrong. Okay. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Silly me. Silly me. Okay, so we've now put Dr. the... Dr. Bob's in. Good evening, Dr. Bob. Hello, Bob. How Michigan. are you? Um, I, I must apologise for the lack of professionalism, but Ed Oliver's in, so anything can happen. You know, it's a, it's a bit like, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the Cockney. The Cockney <laughs> man is in. I think and, Ed uh, is actually using a throat mic, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, and again, on, on a serious note, to go on to the turning, uh, no, uh, you put the put your wax on after the, and just leave it a couple of minutes to allow it to uh, be ready for burnishing and shining and then that's the Here's inside the of the bowl. Here's a question, Mr. Walton. Yes. From Roy the boy. Hello, Roy. He says, I've got a Simon Hope double-ended 3.8 spindle and bowl gouges. I yep. can't work out how to sharpen the fingernail end on the pro edge as the angles don't match. Well, the thing is, it's very unlikely that any angles you get from a factory are going to match your particular sharpening setup. My suggestion is that you decide on the bevel you want and the shape you want 
and produce it as near as you can to the factory. It'll never be exact because they will use different tools, different jigs um, than we have at home. You might have a Sorby Pro Edge, you might have a grinder, you might have six inch wheels, eight inch wheels. You might have a different system for uh, having the extension if you're using the Wolverine one way. So every grind is gonna be personal. So my advice is set it up as near, if you like that grind, set up as near as you can and literally go for it and produce your own with that as an inspiration. That's all I can really say. Um, That's fine. Well, I'm fairly sure that some of those tools are still made by Crown. By Crown? And I know for a fact that Crown use a, a wheel to sharpen yes. as it comes out of the factory. Yeah. So when you put it on a Pro Edge, you need to grind it to the flat profile of the Pro Edge before it works properly. Yeah. Because it's come off of a, I think, at a guess, having the last one sharpened, an eight-inch diameter wheel. Yes, I would think eight-inch diameter, and they will they will most probably grind it to forty-five degrees. Um, probably, yeah. Because forty-five degrees is a good benchmark to start from, and then as you are getting experience, you will realise the shortcomings of just having that for what you do. So then you can alter things to uh, suit your turning style. But in the, sh the short answer, or if there is one coming from my mouth, uh, is literally get as near as you can with the setup on your Pro Edge and, and go for it and, uh, and do your own based on that. Okay, so the wax is dried now. And as I say, keep asking those questions should you wish. Okay, so I'm just turning up slightly now, and all I'm going to do is burnish. No great pressure. People do say sometimes, is Yorkshire Grit okay as a, uh, a final finish? The answer to that is no. It's not intended for that. It is an abrasive paste, essentially, uh, and it just gets the surface prepared to put your finisher choice on, on top. And you can actually apply oil on top of Yorkshire grit as well, apparently. I haven't done it, but then apparently you can. Dr. Bob said uh, he's been using grit since it was first imported to the US. Yeah, good. The problem I... is there's a 250% increase since his first purchase. Well, Clean is another personal friend of mine, and I know that grit in the UK hasn't changed price in many years. I don't think it's since it first came out, to be honest. The so that's got to be import duties. Yeah, and it's shipping. It's it's basically shipping, Doctor Bob. Yeah. That's really, it be. is. Yeah, it's, it's horrendous. The okay, basic so price of grit hasn't changed for I'm sure eight no, years, six years at least. Yeah, I'd agree. So here is the inside finished, um, and surprisingly enough, no tool marks and very little punkiness in there. So it's I'm quite happy yes. with that. Okay, so the inside is finished. So the next thing now is to finish the outside so if we go to the overhead um, now what I like to do whenever I can is I like to support anything on a spindle if it's sticking out more than four or five inches six inches why not if you can now one of my favorite methods used to be a tennis ball uh, and literally you put your tennis ball and you bring up your uh, live center just to give that bit of support the only issue I've got with that is that, especially if it's slightly wet wood, is that you're applying pressure on the outside. If you apply pressure to the centre, you're pushing down what will be the stem as well. Not too much pressure. Uh, so then I started. Is that using... why you stem that? <laughs> then I started using a comb, like so, which does centre very well. The tennis ball doesn't necessarily centre each time, but again, when you're finishing the outside, that's in the way. So the latest thing I use, I've been using for quite a while now, on the end of a live centre, I've literally just drilled a hole slightly smaller than the thread on here and literally screwed it on. So I now have, a, and I put a little uh, O-ring on there, just glued that in, and that literally then will go down 90% of the goblets that I turn, and I'm applying pressure, only slight pressure, to the middle of the goblet, Okay, there we go. And it's just giving that little bit of support while I'm working on it. 
and it means I've got full access should I want to do anything around here. And the other thing, if you've got an aluminium one, be wary. If you've got an aluminium cone, which comes with a one-way, which I'm fortunate enough to have, if you're using Yorkshire Grit, as it's an abrasive, it will actually take a very, very fine, maybe a couple of microns of the aluminium away, which is will then turn black and go on to your work. So that's another, don't ask me how I know that, but um, that's another reason not to use the aluminium when you've got it tight up against there. Okay, so we've got the inside. Now we're just gonna refine the outside. And I'm all steamed up. Couple of questions. Paul Cameron yep. was looking for a recommendation for a table saw he needs to use once, but <laughs> he's spending his wife's money on it. So Ed, do you sell a really expensive table saw that you should use? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> no is the answer to that question. <laughs> no. If I need a table saw, I go and borrow my neighbours. So. Um, I don't actually know. I don't own one. Oh, someone hadn't seen the Pro Edge in use. Okay, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna nip the Pro Edge quickly. Although I've got a, although I've got a double. I'm asked him to do that. The camera would be on the Pro Edge forever. Yeah, well, yeah, you must remind me. It's on here. <laughs> Now, oh, my, oh, yeah. my half-inch spindle gouge is... I've got a sharp edge there, but I just thought I'd just touch this one up. Um, and I use it for hoggy wood, basically, not, not for fine details. So I have it at 45 degrees. That suits me. If you've got the three-hole system, it goes in the front hole. The middle hole would add on five degrees and the back hole 10. So I've put it on to the... Um, this thing. Uh, <laughs> And it's on the 45 degree, three. on the pro oh, set, those. pro set. Yeah, it's just one um, of those with three holes in it, this thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah one of those things. Yeah, what are these things? No, I'm back, I was asking about yours, but I see Brian's answer that in type, so that's good. It's 1,000 right. grit on standard uh, original paste. And that's all you need. On the, on the microphone. All you need to do. And I'll come <laughs> off the pro edge now before I forget. Because one, do like. one does. One does. I'm doing well, aren't I, Brian? Hey. Okay. Of applause. Thank you. Now, the actual shape of this, I'm quite happy with. Um, it's a little bit of a, a lumpy bumpy there. Now, there's two ways of doing this. I could use this and you do a shear scrape. And the other thing you can do, and this is why I really like my radius skews, um, I can use them as a negative rake. Just flat on there and just move it around. Just to take that little bump out, blend it in a little bit more there. Mike, this, yes. Time check. Say again, sorry. Time check. Third beer opened. That, that only works on my channel, Pete. <laughs> oh yeah, it 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 hasn't been, <coughs> it hasn't been an hour yet. Good grief. <coughs> I know, no. it's only 55 minutes and you almost roughed it out. <laughs> I'm not even answering you, Pete. Sorry. <laughs> okay. I, I, I'm devastated, actually. Okay, so now we're talking. This is not a really long stem goblet, obviously. Um, so what we're doing here is just taking some dead wood away. And I'm using that, uh, using the half-inch spindle gouge. Um, let me give a bit more speed. Better two and a half thousand RPM. I just take. Oh, it might be an idea just to show. No, uh, that there. So you can see when I'm doing this cut. When I'm doing this cut, I'm not doing this with my hands. I've got it into my body and I'm moving my body. To move the wood. Now when I get further down here, what I tend to do is go down with a base shape in mind each time when I want to make the stem a bit longer and that way if I haven't done it for a while I'm uh, practicing my concave shape. Okay so we want to go down I like to have a bit of a fillet. This is too big, obviously. A bit of detail. So what I'm going to do is 
let's say go to about there so I'm going to bring this round to there just lift the handle to there stand back have a look that's still a bit big uh, and I always got a peek for this because he's got a good eye for things like this so go a bit further and pick it up again just using to the left of the nose coming round to about there and I think yeah no it's still a bit clumpy isn't it Pete yeah yeah it's just good yeah. so again the only trouble is you've got to be careful because you don't want to go too far down over there a bit more. Oh, a lot more. Don't yeah. be afraid. Don't forget it's big. It's not being afraid. It's a big goblet. It's not really, is it? It's not that big. It was only two and a half inches away to start with. No, what I'm saying is it it's not going to be very tall, is it? It's oh, not going to be... See, uh, short, dumpy stem, a bit like yourself. Yeah, well... <laughs> No comment. To be buddy kept quiet Terry, there. Terry from TJ Tunnel says, I'm sorry I'm late. <laughs> well, it's, <laughs> it's late and late, Terry, you know? Yeah. There's late and you didn't bother turning up now. Yeah. <laughs> now, you can use your skew here just to, with, with the angle of this bevel in the direction you want, just to sharp, just to make that a little bit more and then just here bring it down so you've got a nice transition there nice crisp transition as they call it I think that's okay size wise don't you it's not bad could be a oh. bit smaller bit smaller yeah, yeah. okay Use, okay, using, well, my, I, using my new acquired artistic eye. Yeah, okay. So. The first one, which is like a little bit of a half inch, so people move on the stem, give you a better view of it. The wood do degrees with me, he thinks you should go to me. He's very artistic. Hang on. Uh, t t Terry says, I have a dilemma. We'll explain later. Ooh, intrigue. No, I'm not covering for you to run out of time, Terry. How's that? <laughs> How's that? That was quick beat. That's looking better. Yeah, that's better, yeah. Yeah. Yep. I don't like it too small, otherwise it's it, it, it stops to it stops it being a feature. Snap. Well, it's yeah. that to it. No, that I'm not worried. <laughs> I'm not worried about that. Strange, strangely enough, Ed, as it happens. Yeah, not, well, uh, yeah. It is very dry. Used. It is very dry in parts as well. Well, here, but, here's the excuses coming. Yeah. Down. Oh, I'm full of them, mate. Yeah, I, tell yeah. you. I think every excuse known to man I've used at some we'll stage. In the ground. Okay, so that's got to be the feature. Now we have left that stem. It's going to be really. <laughs> Quite small, for a, in my opinion, for a goblet like this. But never mind. Okay. <laughs> so I'm just listening to my peers. You don't really want to see my body, do you? No, not really. But... Sorry, sorry, repeat that. Sorry. Yeah, we'll go to overhead. Yeah. Oh, okay. We had 159 people watching, but they've all left suddenly. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. Now again, you can't see because I've been told I've got to get rid of it. Um, what I'm doing now, I'm starting to use this, reducing, uh, increasing the stem length to get my shape of my base later on. So I'm just practicing as I go. And all I'm doing now is getting rid of dead wood. a lot of practice. Yeah, well, I always look at this way, Ed. The more practice I do, the luckier I get. <laughs> but you see, on a serious note, now for people that have got less experience, for the newer turner, use every aspect of the turning to practice 
different techniques, different different tools. I've got no idea what shape this is going to be at all. <laughs> We've noticed. I would say if you've got plenty of timber and it's coming free, and cut them fast and see what happens. Yeah, that's right. I've got one of my not, not making here. a profit on it, then um, make up you. and cut a finishing cut. Radar of the wood tunnels in. Good evening, Radar. Hello, Wade. Been for a while. Yeah, he just said hello to me there. Ah. And uh, Nigel Oram is asking, what uh, speed are we turning at? Uh, two and a half thousand revs, Nigel. Oosh. <clears throat> so it's about uh, one of Mike's bowls? Yeah, I've got one of Mike's bowls here. Okay. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. Hang oh. on, let's change. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, while we're on, uh, excuse, excuse, the while we're on, excuse me leaving. I don't know if I've got it here now. That's annoying, isn't it? Um, oh, God. I was going to show everybody that horrible, horrible bowl I turned down at Ed's. I finished it, and it really looks beautiful, though. There's no colour on it. Yeah. I can't find it. Can't find this it. Was, this, was, this, this is the one that you ah. uh, paint all around the edge. Should you? Yeah, that's the one. That's the one. Uh, did he replace those monitors for you, Ed? Is that the no, one? he still owes me for the monitors. So yeah, that no. Was the backdrop that you had. Sorry, people, to be out of camera, but I can't find it. I really cannot find it. That's annoying because I made such a good job of it. <laughs> no, it looked really. It looked like a bowl. There was no colour. There was a lovely shape on it, and the OG was absolutely perfect after I'd finished with it. So anyway, um, oh, Pete's gone. Yeah, yeah, because you got on um, four-person view, and I'm on. I'm on uh, there we are, five, Pete. Five, Hello. Five, you okay. You, you should have said something. Right, we'll take this opportunity to have a quick drink, and uh, you don't need you don't need to see me. No, you. It, <laughs> I won't disagree with that. I, I wish I could get rid of myself. Ed, you're very quiet. You really is it, starting to annoy me now. It's disturbing you, isn't it? <laughs> well, it I'm is. Quiet yeah. because I've been fiddling with this microphone. See if I can improve things. It's perfect now. We could, unfortunately, you can hear, hear you perfectly now. Ah, well then my fiddling has worked, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. nothing. Well, you always were the fiddler. Oh, I'm telling you, mate. Yeah. I've sorted out my sand. Now that translates to us. Sorted out my sand. I sorted out my sand. Yeah. Sorted, all sorted now. My sand's perfect. 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 Right. Um, I've had enough of looking at Ed, I'm afraid. Sorry, Ed. I'm, I'm, I've had enough. We're going back to this. Okay. So I've decided, <laughs> in my wisdom, um, oh, to leave geez. that like that and then bring the stem down because it's stubby for the size of the gob, uh, the gob, size of the bowl is quite stubby. So I'm going to leave that bit of detail there once I get rid of that little ridge, which would sand out. But Ed would never forgive me if I used 20 grit on that. You see that just that little line in the middle there. I'm just using my 40 degree spindle gouge. See, it kind of needs to look like a drinking glass goblet type stem. But yeah, since we invented glass, which makes alcohol taste so much better. It does. I, I don't just drink out of a wooden goblet, so you might as well make your stem more finial based than practical. Yeah, okay. The thing is that. 95% of my goblets are purely ornamental. You don't drink from them. <clears throat> I quite like that, actually. I'm, I'm going to go with that. I don't care. It's something different. Okay, so now it's a case of getting rid of wood. And as I say... You I, quite I, like that, so you don't have to do a thin stem. I could do a thin yeah, stem yeah. if you want. If you really yeah, want... If you, yeah, yeah. What you have to ask is, would a thin stem actually shoot this goblet? 
But actually, seeing it's a demonstration, if everybody wants me to do a thin stem from here down, I will do so. Absolutely no problem whatsoever. There may be trouble ahead. Could be. Nigel Orham said, why is Ed standing in front of a dark wolf? Yeah. I think that's one of his latest creations. Dark wolf. Now what I like to do is use... What I tend to do now is use my skew to go down the stem. Two reasons. Number one, it leaves a, a, a good finish. And it's an easy way of taking off very small amounts. But obviously you can't start up here too soon because the top... This is just a, 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 um, a half inch. Um, if, if it's too big a skew, the toe will foul the wood above it and all I'm doing now is blending that in everybody's gone quiet bated breath now what's going to happen next yeah Shh. okay now that's going too thin for me but because I've been told this goblet is not going to look good but it's going to have a damn thin stem the other thing to make sure as well which is something i didn't think of if you're going to go thin have very little pressure here don't be pushing but the, as i say the advantage of having this sort of a setup is you're pushing down the center but don't forget if you push too much as you get thinner it'll flex and it'll break and i can tell you i know that from experience in public might put a bit of wood back on that stem looks a bit thin for that goblet yeah it does doesn't yeah. it <clears throat> put it in reverse put it back on <laughs> that's why you got reverse on the lathe isn't it yeah oh yeah that's a good thing with edited videos you see because you can actually put it back on This gobbler is actually aesthetically going to be not very nice. And it's only because Ed has told me I've got to have a thin stem. Okay, back to the skew. And the other thing, when you're not doing a, a long thin stem gobbler, is you don't need to put your fingers underneath to support the stem as long as you do nice light cuts. Ben's offering odds of four to one that it's going to fly. <laughs> and the other thing is, <laughs> again, for the turner with less experience, don't hold your skew too tight. Because if you do that, you lose your flexibility and your fluidity with it. Mike, I thought we convinced you to go 20 degree and um, straight edge. That one looks a little bit curved still. This one? That is 20 degrees. Yeah, but it's a little bit curved on that end there. It's ah, right, okay. Yeah, well, the only straight skew I've got is that one. Yeah, much easier to use a straight one. Well, yeah, maybe, don't, well, in your opinion. You convinced Steve last weekend as mine, well. Mine too. Okay. I'm not going to go any thinner than that, unless I'm forced to. No, it looks fine to me. Yeah, it looks fine no. to me. No, no one's going to force you, are they? You're a creep, Brian. What? That creep? I wouldn't use a big skew like that. <laughs> Brian? <laughs> you reckon that base is a bit thick, don't you? No, already uh, what uh, I'm doing. Uh, 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 needs to be a bit smaller than the bowl anyway, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, well, I, uh, a, li a, little a, little, a little story there. When, when I came back and, uh, after my eyes and we, we had a bit of a hangout and I was turning goblets just to get my eye back in again. And the first one I, first one I turned looked something like a... Uh, what would you say, Brian? 
It was very clumpy. The base was much bigger <laughs> than the. Um, yeah, yeah. And more, and more you, were just a, you were just afraid it was going to fall over, mate, weren't yeah. you? Yeah. <laughs> well, that was story back a little bit. When Mike had his eyes done and he couldn't do lives and he couldn't do any turning either, really. No. We spent a lot of time chatting to him and he gave Brian grief. Me? Four yeah. weeks nah. over his face being too thick. Nah. Right. And then he went and did one thicker. <sighs> Made my day, it did. I didn't tell him very much. I, I could actually. It all. I hardly just, mentioned it at just all. mentioned it briefly, yeah. Just hardly mentioned it at all. What they don't realise, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, is that I did it on purpose to make Brian feel better. Yeah, you yeah. liar. Yeah, <laughs> well, You're such a porky pie, Tom. Hey, prove otherwise. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we believe you. No, you shouldn't. They say you shouldn't cut uphill, which you shouldn't. But when you're doing something like this, and I want to have it coming out, sort of going thin and coming out a bit thicker at the bottom again, which is a design, I just don't think, if you're I have it... Long, shallow, you're putting if, a long, shallow cove in it then, don't you? Yeah, basically. Uh, the thing is, and it doesn't necessarily have to match up here, because I'm going to do something else at the base, but um, normally I would be stupid and uh, take up the the goading I've had about a thin stem but it goes against the grain purely and simply is if that is that thin from there to the bottom I don't think it'll look right personally we could have a quick pull if you like but uh, that's my own opinion but then what do I know Quite poor. Well, you're going to some, want us to pull. some comments. Some com <laughs> This well, is a poll. Comments, a very, very thin poll. Well, well, we were talking about making. Make, you said about making you go thinner earlier, and uh, the wood dude says force them. Just force them to go thinner. Yeah, but if I go thinner, Benjamin says the base should be three point seven percent narrower than the widest part of the goblet. Correct, approximately. Plus or minus zero point five degrees. I yeah, personally. Okay. Think. Let's, let's let's go what it looks like, not see what it measures. What I, what I think no, I is, I think it should be, if it looks good. Who's, who's on crutches? If you think it works, Keith then. Keith Jarvis is on crutches. Keith, Keith Jarvis is on crutches. What have you done to yourself, Keith? I think it looked nice with a nice long stem. Yeah, especially with that big sort of fillety thing at the top, you know, that big fat fillet thing he has at the top. Yeah. Okay, so you're saying you don't want a cove, you want that thin all the way down. Uh, let's see. But seriously, what do you think? Or you could put another... Um... Seriously, I like the cove, but... Yeah. Well, okay. You yeah. could put another whatever it is you put on the top there. Up here? Yeah. I don't yeah. like, I don't like that. I don't like, them for, I don't like the same That's at it. the bottom. I'm not sure what that is. Is that is that an upside down flat onion or what is it? See what I call it. Like 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 double golf tea. <laughs> okay, Jab has got a really bad sore on his stump, so he can't wear his leg. Oh dear. It's not so good, Keith. Yeah, it's not so hope good. That, hope that heals up for you quickly, buddy. I'll tell you what I am gonna do. Uh, Gary Glass says Mike, are you, yeah. are you demonstrating how to turn the toothpick? Oh no, this isn't a toothpick. Ed's got or, or a, co Ed's or a got, cocktail or a cocktail stick. Yeah, Ed's got very very big gaps in his teeth. So, <laughs> mind you, not as many as mine. <laughs> but uh, so I'm I'm going a lot. We have a little bowl. Wood dude says if wood dude says you have to put a bead in the middle. Yeah, nice bead. That will look nice. Yeah, it would do. Well, ben Jarman says the stem should be hand chased for no particular reason. <laughs> yeah, I rather like that actually. What, a bead in the middle? No, this. This ah, right. I don't put a bead in the middle now. No. All right, okay, I see what you mean. Yeah. So what have you done there? Put a little 
There's a little undercut there, look, just a little that, road. That little rolled edge you've done. Little, little yeah, I, that's for you, Brian. I just thought I'd give you a little, little road. And that, that there was a skate. Oh, was it? Yeah, there's a different skate there. Multi, I, I was watching multi, the chat and I missed it. Do it again. Multi faceted. I can actually skate while turning. That was a skill of this man, <laughs> and Mohammed says, oh my god, I need a century to do this. Yeah, he's doing it quicker than Mike now. <laughs> Excuse me? Now, now you know why Mike has a white beard. <laughs> it wasn't when I started. He's like Santa Claus. He turns one thing a year. Oh, that's nice now, Mike. Oh, I'm liking that. Yeah, I like that. Nice rolled edge on that too. Lovely. Steam said a bead in the middle, not at the bottom. Oh, well, I always got me bottoms and me tops mixed no. up, mate. I thought you were right. going to make a tiny. Is that not just going to be a tiny captive ring? Oh, look, put a nice bead in there. You're doing well. That'll do. Let's not go too stupid. Right, okay. Look, the reason I say is you, you can carry on. There'd be so many bits and bobs on it, it detracts from the wood. Let's stop it and have a look. You see, there's no figure in the middle at all, you see. Oh, you've ruined it. No, it looks like a three-piece goblet, doesn't it? <laughs> it looks like a different bit of wood in the middle. It looks like the, one you've had to fix. Yeah. Which is the design, thank you. Right, okay. So, we've got to the stage now where you sand. Oh, just to say, Mike, I would, below that bead, Yeah. I would just go down to the same thickness of the stem of both the beads for about three or four mil. And then flare into your face. Just to take that stem down through the bead. Okay. I'm not with you. All right, okay. Yeah. Yeah, just, just a little bit, just below the bead, come down to the same size as the stem, just above it. You're just trying to make this interesting, Pete. You mean, you mean the bead's a little bit flat? The bead's fine. No, the bead's it fine. Needs a bit of definition. Just, yeah. Just beneath it. Just go up, down a bit here. Yeah. Yeah. Just bring that down to the same size as the stem above it so the bead stands out better. Then you may get the bead top of the Instead of looking like a donut that you've sat on. Radar the wood tongue, I think she should have a captive ring. I don't think they're a captive ring because captive rings are silly and they should be illegal. But they are illegal in, in my view. Oh, that's, that's a bit. How was that? No. Oh. It's looking quite smart. Yeah. Have you been having lessons? That's it. That's just that's the same. End there, isn't it? Obviously, there's a bit of a peak there, but that, that'll sand out anyway, so that'll round that bead <laughs> over. Um, there's a crack appeared so, here. Uh, Flint of Wood Dancers was just put in the chat here, Mike. He says, uh, yep. for, all you tur for all of you turners with less experience, <laughs> you, you can actually turn three or four goblets in the time Mike has turned this one. <laughs> I'm starting to get a little bit annoyed about this now. Are you? Well, yeah. I'm getting annoyed about it, buddy. No, I'm getting annoyed about this. People going on about how long I take to turn things. No. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, I don't really care. Yeah, <laughs> we've noticed. I don't care. We don't care. We don't care. Okay. Um, I'm so it would take him ages to turn a goblet, then three turn up at the same time. Yeah. It's not about the speed. About oh, yes, it is. It's not for me. Okay, so... Sand through. What I would suggest again for the turner with less experience, if you're turning a longer stem than this, I would actually um, sand and put a finish on the bowl. That's, yeah. my, that's my advice. But with a with a piece like this, which is easily supported by the tailstock, um, I wouldn't bother. If you're doing a long thin stem goblet. Um, yeah, if, if you do it, finish every couple of inches and just don't go yeah, back to it. Yeah, exactly. Be 
you can see it's already starting to wobble a little bit because the stem is a bit thinner than I'd originally planned because I was goaded by the Oliver and others by... and others no, as well not goaded at all you were goaded. you know I'm gullible you know I'm easily I'm... led I was just saying it would look nice yeah, in your eye I don't know which eye, left or right, but in your eyes. But I think it looks quite smart. I don't like saying it. But I think it's yeah. horrible. It's not something I turn out of choice. I quite like it. If, if you get the base right, it'll be good. Yeah. Well, that the is the base. I've just got to take it. it I've got to take it out the truck now and cut the tenon off, and that's the base. Oh no, sorry, I'm not, I'm not turning it for Brian. Sorry. Oi, 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 oi. Hey. Enough of that already. I could put a bit of colour on it, Ed, if you want me to. Well, you could do it in that stem, because it's nothing. Oh, right. yeah, that'd be great. He said the stem was a bit black plain. <laughs> yeah, you could do that. I'm not going to spend too much time on the sanding, because... Uh, oh, it's only an hour and a half, and I need finish. So, and you know, again, for the turn of less experience, you should spend a lot more time finishing your piece than you do turning it. Okay, because you've spent all that time getting exactly what you want, and then you put a poor, have a poor finish, a poor sanding technique, or you rush it. Um, it's wasted. All that time is wasted. So. Yeah. Nobody, nobody sees what tools you use to cut it or how well you cut it or how exactly. you they, only they just see, see the finish. They see the end result. I think that's a bit of spot in it. With a bit of luck, we'll see yeah. the end result here then. Well, you never know, Ed. <laughs> I might just get really annoyed at everybody's comments about how slow I am. I'll just break it in half before I finish it. Just to make everybody happy. <laughs> Nick Allen's um, got a question. He said, I got the impression earlier that support of the bowl end was optional. It is. Would you ever turn a goblet like this without end support? No. Um, yes, but I wouldn't have the... I would as well. I wouldn't have the stem so short. Not that thin. But I always... Uh, so thin. But I always say, personally, uh, and especially for the less experienced turners in there, that if you can support something, support it. If you can do anything with, look, I mean, look, if you can um, support something, whether it be a bowl, it doesn't matter what it is, support why it. not? Now I'm going to have a problem centering it again now. The uh, little gizmo that Mike's got there, price of an O-ring, a um, bit of scrap wood off the floor, and you can make that. And... If it's cheap and easy to do, why not do it? There's no prizes for not doing it. No, exactly. Uh, that's the way I look at things. I, I don't see the point. You can see how much it's moved now, because I've moved this. So, um, but all, it's all for, so the it's... Com all for the common good. Now, the other thing is, when you're turning on a spindle, sanding on a spindle, <laughs> go with a grain on the stem. Because, like you would a pen because you're going to get radial marks. Well, James Casty's had to go. He's been called twice for dinner. Don't be called the third time, James. You'll be in trouble. Yep, so Gary Glass has said, compared to me, Mike, your turn at supersonic speed. <laughs> it's not about the speed. <laughs> I keep saying it's not about the speed. It isn't about the speed. No, it's not about the speed at all. Um, Particularly if, if you're not a, if you're not a production turner or turner. Yeah. you're frozen again at the moment. Uh, there's no uh, actually none, none of you are on YouTube. Right, well we've got Skype up. We can see you. We can see you. Yeah, I know, but you're not on YouTube for some reason. There's only me on YouTube. Yeah, so there is. Yeah, so right, there is. Sorry about this, yeah, guys. You're on your own. Bit of a technical hitch here. Uh, you can hear the guys, but you can't. Here, you can't see them. Um, Bye, Brian. 
teal helmet. Okay, so I'll carry on. Get back to the raising distance to him. You'll be fine. Yeah, I'll yeah. carry on. Okay, as if you were. Yeah, that's a dumb man. We're only taking the piss anyway. <laughs> okay. Uh, we're not, are we? I wasn't. It's Mike. Wouldn't do that. Oh, that's true. Okay, so now we go to 240. Unfortunately, guys, you can't see the earworms, but you can hear them, unfortunately. What do you mean, unfortunately? Let's see your cheek, Mr. Walt. <laughs> the quality of the pictures dropped out as well. Went a bit of sandpaper. Was that the flying stuff? Yeah, that's why... I don't know if you can see, but I've got I've super glued in a little mesh oh, look, guard. Terry's, so Terry's actually joined us, look. Hello, Terry. Hi, Terry. Hello, how are you? Hello. <laughs> There's no picture for you lot, for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> Can't hear you very you well, either. See, we can still see each other on Skype, so I don't know what's going on. Okay. You've made a mess of it. Yeah. As long as me, no, nothing, nothing happened here. No. I've got an yeah, excellent connection happened. as well, it says on YouTube, excellent Hello connection. everybody. Hello Terry, Terry's joined us from TJ Turning. Turning right, with... Gary Glass, Gary Glass suggests you could just mute the earworms as well and get on with it yourself. Yeah, yeah. I think you might be right. Uh, I'm seriously right, considering Gary. going back to as I used to. <laughs> and just do it on my oh, own. Oh, 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 are you now? <laughs> no. I'm what not. breaking your goblets? Yeah, I don't. I don't see why I should have people on my side rooting for me to break stuff. I can understand my viewers wanting it, but you know, That's friends. Oh, I was going to say friends. I haven't got any friends. <laughs> Call me Billy. No mates. Okay, so we are now going to oh, put some sure. sanding sealer on. That's nice, for sure. Yeah. And again. I'm not doing it with a lathe spinning because the um, stem is a little narrower, shall we say, than I originally intended. So I've got to be careful here with the old goblet bowl. So Stephen the Wood says, being a newer turner, I'm yeah. at a loss. Shouldn't this goblet be airborne by now? Yeah, usually, it should usually be. Is. Yeah. Usually is. <laughs> Oh, welcome, Terry. Missed you. That's all right, Mike. <laughs> Missed you. <laughs> like like a, hole. a hole in the head. I was just got to say, like a hole in the head, but I thought that was a bit old-fashioned. But <laughs> you stepped up to the plate with a plomb. Okay. So that's the sanding sealer applied. Now, because it's punky wood... Um, it's going to absorb in certain areas more than others, but I'm not going to worry about that because it's a demo and we don't want Ed falling asleep or making any more nasty comments. What I want to know is why... Oh, you're all back now. Oh, you're all it back. Has, yeah. It hasn't made any nasty uh, comments. I have made no nasty comments yeah. at all. I've been helpful, I think. <laughs> Very good. So, what's your definition of? Sorry, re what all I got to do now? NDIF. 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 Put Terry in that window and re-enable it. What are you doing? That Tom Coker said, Mike. Maybe oh, it's you like again, Pete. Like it's you again. So, yeah, yeah, what change, 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 yeah, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm with yeah, it. Sorry, on. sorry, people. <clears throat> no, so I don't know. Faster, but will they share their actions on a YouTube broadcast? Explain what and why they are doing things. Yeah. Thanks oh, for sorry, sharing. No, hang on. We got two heads now. That's no good. Oh, I know. Two heads. It, it does better than none. <laughs> it doesn't actually say who's who. You see. You got to say whenever I'm on the. That's not very that's helpful. Whether it's on YouTube or just filming. I get twice as many catches and twice as much trouble and it takes 10 times longer than it should do. Filming and live streaming does add lots of complications. Although Mike is a professional, he should be good at it by now. No, we've got two Brian's now. Two Brian's. 
I only uh, it because you're, you're in trouble. So I thought, I'll oh, come on instead of that lot. You know. Oh, you kept me. Oh, you brought the badge with you, did you? I brought the badge. Blouse, tied down. Got an RPT and a badge. Can't do it, Terry. Today. Can't, Can't get you it, on, Terry. mate. Can you hear me though? Yeah, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll do. Yeah, you sure? I'll talk through Brian's body. So Terry. <laughs> <laughs> Not so sure that's a good idea. No. So Terry's with us, ladies Hello, and gentlemen. Um, but unfortunately, Sorry, unfortunately, you can't see Terry, but you can see Ed. So I do apologise. I'd like to change that around, but unfortunately I can't. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> right, let's go back to the overhead, and the paint is now dry, <laughs> or in this case, a sanding sealer. Yeah, I'm not yep. quite sure how to answer this, the sanding sealer question. With honesty, yeah, go on. Is there a difference between cellulose and acrylic sanding sealers? Yes, there is. <laughs> that sorted out. Yeah. Acrylic is generally water based, and so is um, white thinners based. Um, ish. So if you're doing a water based paint, then it's good to use the cellulose over it. If you're doing a spirit based paint, then it's good to use the water over it just because they're different. Yeah. And they won't make it run. Each one won't make the other one run. Yeah. Uh, the reason, I mean, I, the reason I use, I've used cellulose, I have got acrylic sanding sealer in a spray. Uh, when I did dabble in colour, <laughs> I did actually use it um, because it dries quicker as well. It was, a very, yeah. it was a very short experiment. Yeah, it was very short. I've still got the colours to prove yeah, but it. If you're using the brush on stuff, then cellulose will dry faster. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, yes. Ben Jammer says, would you not be able to see Terry? Yeah, yeah. Sure. I don't Benjamin. disagree. He's never there. Occasionally he's running with Terry. Just because I like a holiday now and again. Occasionally. Yeah. Yeah, it, more it, again. It, now, yeah. Your voice has gone. It's another coming. holiday. Let's well, go on holiday again. I think I'm asking Pete if he wants to do tomorrow lunch then. No, I don't. Not doing it. He already said no. It's not September, Pete. Uh, Terry. Can't do it. I've done, I've done three in the recent weeks. You have? Three? Yeah. yeah, done three. I've been away. I've been away. Now be aware that you're a turner. <laughs> when you turn the speed up for when you're gritting or when you're burnishing your wax, always be mindful of your bowl, that it's supported. And if it's not supported, your stem is thick <clears> enough to support it. Actually, for a newer turner, when you've got a thin stem and a weight on the end of it, it's good practice to turn your lathe speed down um, when you stop it. Yes. And definitely. then turn it back up again gradually after it started spinning. Otherwise, yeah. you get uh, a possibility of the, the stem twisting and breaking just by turning the lathe on. I actually had that happen several times. Purely because I forgot and just turned the lathe on and it was doing 2000 RPM and it wasn't supported and it wasn't perfectly central and it was a thin stem and it just broke so it ended up a Magnus three piece. has said that's a thin stem do you experience any warping or bending when it's that thin yes I mean it's only thin for a small area because I was just placating Ed Oliver and friends um, I don't wouldn't have added that thin on a goblet of this bulk but um, yeah, you you will. <laughs> and the thing is, if it's not, if it's a little bit on the wet side as well, it'll warp. Um, I'll show you when I did this after as a practice because I haven't actually done a goblet for quite a while. Um, that it You've was done anything for quite a while. No, well, not not wood turning related anyway. <laughs> Okay, so I think that's the Yorkshire grit sorted. So we'll just wait for a couple of seconds and then put some Hampshire sheen on and we'll be done apart from the parting off. Uh, one thing I did forget to do because I was talking. 
And we'll let's just sort out the final diameter of the base. I thought you were just going to leave it. Sorry? I, I thought you were just going to leave that there. It looks very nice. Put a small... I'm not going to put, put a usual me. piece of lead in the bottom, make sure it doesn't fall over, Mike. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> I actually, I, I keep the nub in the middle because I, I sharpen that to a point and stick it on the stick it into the wood of the table. You see, you see, we're looking looking there to um, agree with us. I don't want to mark it. Bearing in mind, it does taper slightly towards the rim. I will see what the. There, just just technical there. now, we're, we're measuring things. Yeah, no, look, and you see, there's there we've got the middle. The base is that much smaller than the widest part of the bowl. Okay? I now, to a bowl of that sort of shape. I like the base to be the same as the rim. Yes, I was going to say, come down slightly. So I'm saying it's slightly less than that. So if We'll do exactly what Pete says, because I'm just the turner. So we'll put that down to the diameter of the rim. Which is there. That's got a, is it a hair to come off there. So we'll remove that with the old, what shall I do? There it is. So we just want to come down a little bit. So I'm just using my spindle gouge. Just remember, Mike, you've got 110 watching and you've been running for about three and a half weeks. No <laughs> 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 oh, comment. So you've got plenty of time, Mike, another week to go. <laughs> yeah, my usual three-week spell. I don't have to take all this rubbish, you know. Yes, you do. You do. Hey, it's not as if I give it out. Can you finish the base, Mike, with the skew chisel? You won't need to worry about sanding. No. <laughs> no, very true. Very true. Okay, and now another little... Uh, no, it's not a trick, it's a tip. Finish out with a skew chisel, Mike, and then you won't have to worry about something. Yeah, you'll do the first time, Terry. I ignored you then. I'm going to ignore you now. Um, if anybody, so if anybody if... wants to help Mike and contribute to his electric costs for running this live show, <laughs> you may find that he doesn't do uh, uh, buy me a coffee anymore. You may just have to super chat him. Price of electricity has gone up, you know. Don't forget to undercut your base. And it does, at this Make stage, sure it, I'm not going to go through it now, but normally, when I was sanding, I would have sanded under there as well, um, because it, it's just easier to do it that way, and then you've already got the very centre of your base to worry about. I'll just put a bit of, just a quick sand on there, but normally you go through the grits on the edge as well. Round off the corner, to please Brian. <clears throat> and I got a cheat there, and I just got a wax straight on there because I say it's only a demo piece, isn't it? Okay, so we have done it. We have sanded. We have Yorkshire gritted. All we have to do now is wax it and wait for a couple of minutes for that to go off, burnish it, and then the job is done. Apart from parting off, which there are two ways of parting off. My way, turn the lathe up and let it fall off. Or the proper way. Or the proper way. Well, there's two ways, actually. You can either part it off completely with your parting tool, or you can do the last little bit with a saw. Uh, and all I'll say to you is, if you've got a thin stem, there's no he there's no points for being a hero. Use your saw and saw it off. With a smaller goblet, with a thicker stem, you can just hold it, hold the stem as you part it off. For the newer turner, when Mike does part this off, he'll be doing a, an undercut and um, taking the centre of that in so it stands on the outside edge, which yeah. is why you do that little little parting around the edge, you sand and finish that bit, and then the undercut is the only bit you've got to finish with. It only has to be a slight undercut, 
Yeah. Fuel, fuel, yeah, I was just saying, I did actually mention that. Um, that it's undercut. So the reason for that, as Pete says quite rightly, is that it will then... Um, it will then sit on the surface you put it on. We're not even. We're not. Excuse me. We're not even two hours yet. I mean, this is a this is a record. An hour and three quarters of the finished piece. It is for me. I tell you. I mean, I haven't talked much. What? You haven't talked much. <laughs> not, not, not for me. Hmm. <laughs> Most of the 60 people come into the chat because they couldn't get a word in edgeways. <laughs> <laughs> See, most people, when they do a live, they do bowls. They may colour them. They may do ones with square bases, which was very nice, Brian. That was excellent, by the way. Um, you like it? But I do. I feel I like doing goblets. Um, and I know they're not practical. They're ornamental. You can do. You can make them practical. Um, you can finish them with various finishes, which are water resistant as opposed to waterproof. Um, but I just like turning goblets. One of those things. A sad little person that I am. Um, yeah, I, I don't dislike turning bowls. Don't get me wrong. I do enjoy turning bowls, especially wet, wet stuff. I wish I could find that one from Mr. Oliver, actually to show you what a, 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 a non-coloured bowl looks like. Um, ben, however, Jam ben Jamman says he, he thinks you should go back and make the bead a little bit smaller. Yeah, OK, Ben, I think I agree well, with you. Well, your non-coloured bowls looks like that, though. So, Sorry? You know. A bigger button? I said one of your non-coloured bowls looks like that. Yeah. <laughs> Who did that, actually, Ed? It was. Hmm? It's yours. It's not mine. It was you. I didn't, yeah. I didn't do it on your place. Oh, no, I brought it down to you, didn't I? No, nah, what I did this afternoon for ten minutes is I made that and that for you. It took... <laughs> See, pr production turner, uh, a, 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 a registered... Professional turner. I took ten minutes to turn this bowl. Okay, it's got a hole in it, but I turned the bowl in ten minutes and this goblet. You know, ten minutes. You just got to keep going, haven't you? You just don't stop. <laughs> you just do not stop. I tell you, it's incessant. It, it is continual. And in fact, I always said I'd never vape on camera again. But it's got me so anxious and wound up. I'm going to have a vape in public. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to, on a serious note, don't thank all the guys. I won't say especially Ed, because that wouldn't be fair on the other guys that are here, you know, come hell or high water. But I would like, Ed has actually got visitors, and he very kindly told them to sod off, and he's going to come and do this. <laughs> so, uh, cheers for that, Ed. Allison uh, says, enjoy your demo, mate, but I don't like the, don't enjoy the earworm. <laughs> ah, is that only because Mr. Oliver's here, Alison? <laughs> no, again, I'm very wary of this uh, bowl bit because the stem is thinner than I wanted. I kind of agree that I probably would have gone for a thicker stem. Oh, no, you tell me. No, you tell me. Yeah, the yeah, like stem would have looked nice, wouldn't it? Where was your, su <laughs> Where was your support in, your, in my time of need, Mr. Ravenscroft? Oh, you didn't get support. You told oh, me you never to give That's support. fair enough. But you're being honest at the end of the day. It I took am. a while for honesty to come out. I mean, this sort of a stem, I've done similar before, but on, with the... Um, the bowl of the goblet being a little bit smaller in diameter and a possibly a different shape because this is just a standard because I wanted to keep that um, standard to maintain the figure because as you can see on the stem there is no figure at all it's disappeared apart from a little bit there 
Um, That's trouble with bolted wood, though. If you cut it thin, you can Indeed. Lose but if the stem had been thicker, there was a possibility that I could have kept some of the figure, uh, some of the figure in the stem. But never mind. I listened to my superiors, um, and I'm afraid I'm not happy that I did. But it's done now. Yeah, you know, I'm looking at that. And last Monday when I did the live, I was lucky enough to have Brian in my house. Oh, cool. So we, we sat down and, and looked at the piece afterwards and discussed it. Yeah. Which is a, a privilege, is... a rare privilege in the last couple of years. <laughs> um, and I'm looking at that piece now and I would say, what I would have done, <laughs> when, when I do the next one, I would have done. is I would mirror the goblet in that top detail you've got there. This, here. Yeah. 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 Okay. Mirror the goblet. Yeah, but that's coffee then, turning. Well, no, not copy turning. Just Joke. mirror it. It's got to be somewhere near. Um, but the shape of it. And then brought it down into a stem similar to that. Um, and then mirrored the base in a bottom bead. You've got a goblet in a goblet, effectively. Yeah. Might be quite interesting. Might be a laugh to turn it. That's what it's all about. Okay, that's about as thin as I want to go. Now, just to uh, prove the point, if you like, I remove the support. <clears throat> and if I start the lathe... This is where it all goes wrong. Yeah, but you can see... Look, I, I'm not going to start the lathe. It's pointless. You can Don't see there's a, there's a lot of movement there. But in actual um, fact, this... You shouldn't play, shouldn't you turn up to 3,400 and start it? This shouldn't be too Sorry, bad. Sorry, 3,000 revs, go on. This shouldn't be too bad. <laughs> Edward. <laughs> Ed, Ed, Ed knows all about that. Now, you see, it's starting to move now. You could actually part that off if you wanted to. And I'll be honest with you, if I was on my own, I would do. But I don't think I could actually put up with having it fly off now, to be honest with you. So just, I'll just use a pull saw and just support it. can turn it round. There you go. And that leaves you just with a nub there, which you can sand off. And uh, <clears throat> the job is done. So we'll go to the face view. And there's our little goblet. Or large goblet. There it is. Very nice. So Hello, with, a, with a piece like this, I honestly think that the, the wood must be the feature, not so much the design and everything else. If it was, I mean, that sort of a design is fine on, on, on plain wood or wood with less figure. But unfortunately, because I stupidly listened to my earworms um, and Benjamin, I went thinner and we lost everything there because it would be nice just to have a little bit of figure, even if it's only on one side, but there's none left. But never mind. I mean, proportion wise, you know, it, it, it's OK. But a, a bulb that side would I would actually not going on too much, but I would actually do more of a chalice with that. So you've got the, the stem coming down like this. So you keep all the figure. But uh, there you go. I'm quite happy with it. I quite like it, actually. Yeah, it's, it, it's, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. It is a bit, um, what do you want to stand? Yeah. It's a bit top heavy with regards to the size of the stem, the size. I know I'm going on about it, the size of the bowl. For that size of bowl, you need, if it's going to be that thin, you need the goblet to be another couple of inches long. To give it good proportions, yeah. in my I opinion, it's very nice for the new returner. Yeah, well, seeing I'm a new returner at the moment, I quite agree. Okay, guys, that's uh, here endeth the lesson. Gotta say, uh, Mike, it's a pleasure to have you back, mate. Well, you it's lovely to have you back. Big yeah. time. Yeah, lovely to lovely to have you back. Yeah, thank you very much. I bet I'll stay quiet. Oh, I, should, yeah. I tell you what, Ed, there's a first first time for everything, mate. And uh, I'll, I'll bring the guys back in now. Um, no. Yeah. Uh, someone was asking, um, what was it just Pete talking? I can't remember. About, about this. All that is, is a bit of wood with a hole drilled, slightly smaller, because that 
has a thread on it like the uh, like this Can you one. Put yourself back on main screen so your picture's big. Okay. Um, okay. So what happens is that this little gizmo here is merely to give support. My one uh, thing I will change, I wouldn't put an O-ring on it because it, it has on here as well. It's slightly blacked the inside, which is not a problem. You can get that off. But um, a, a piece of mouse mat or some shelf liner, non-slip liner you on there. You can get uh, across the silicon top. rings, O-rings that are sort of translucent grey colour. They don't right. stain things. I just had these when I when I got the sphere yeah, jig off, off uh, Paul, so I just got a load of these. However, um, that's all you do is drill a hole slightly smaller because the threads are quite sharp on here, as long as the wood isn't hardwood. And then you can literally lock it and screw the wood on and it'll be dead centre. And that gives you support. But I've got loads of different things I use and I just happen to be using that wood today. Okay. So, are there any questions from anyone? When's your next live? Um, I really can't say because everything has yeah. changed work-wise. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, it, it. I've been. I've been away for ten days. I've had holiday. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and they're changing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everything's changing yeah, again. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm practicing for my retirement. You see. So, uh, no, it, 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 it's very difficult. If I get a Monday off, like I'm not working tomorrow, then I will do a live. So when I have a long weekend, it will most probably be every, I don't know, couple of three weeks, I would think. Um, and I must well, try and get... Too often, then. That's good. Yeah, well, that's what I thought, Brian. I, I was thinking of you, actually. So uh, that's my pleasure. My pleasure. Just have a quick, sweet, quick drink. Well, that's good. If you do Monday evening, then, Mike, then Brian could do Monday lunchtime. What? No, 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 Sunday night, no, I said. Not a chance. Sunday evening, so, I said. We've got, got Terry doing the next time tomorrow because you've got to cover us, we've got to do it. We've got Ryan tomorrow night. Yep. We've got Dave doing air sometime next month, hopefully. Yes, that, that'll, yeah, that'll be good. Yeah, back I'll do something next month. Good. Are, you, are you having earworms, Ed, or are you doing the u usual format? I will probably uh, uh, just do the usual format. I don't think I could cope with earworms and you're not, you're not, that up. You're not brave enough then, obviously. So, in other words, you won't I give me... I don't mind the abuse. It's not the abuse. It's the setting up of it. Technical bits. Yeah. It's easy. It's easy. If I can do it, anybody can. I, I only you forgot initially. Like you didn't make it look that easy. No, I know. I you haven't done it. Feet. Nobody at it. all. Yeah. <laughs> If you want to do it with anyone, then just give me a shout. Thank you, yeah. I couldn't train Mike, but I'm sure I can work with you. <laughs> <coughs> Cheers, mate. I, what I will say, on a serious note, this is the first time that um, we've we've done one of these with more than three earworms. Uh, up to then, everything was sorted, and it was the same three earworms each time, so they logged in and they automatically came on OBS. But because... Um, Ed joined, then obviously everything's changed. But I know what to do now, I think. Go on, Ed's fault then. Yeah, well, exactly. Yeah, and, don't and have I'll, me on here. And I'll, <laughs> it's all Ed's fault, yeah. I'll be quite honest with you, ladies and gentlemen, I'm a, I'm a little bit a little bit put out that Ed wasn't more, um, how can I put it, more insulting, but in fairness, he did have technical problems at his end with his audio, uh, the main problem being we could actually hear what he was saying. Um, but then <laughs> when that stopped, then the technical issues, as far as I was concerned, were spot on. <laughs> but, uh, no, I hope you enjoyed it. It's a mic honest. issue. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Always yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. Mike, 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 I've got issues, Ed. I, you know, number one, the friends I keep, the company I keep, is one of the issues. I think I keep being told by other other people. <laughs> well, I went back to Wales. I stayed in Wales for a few days uh, with my old mates, my schoolmates, and um, as we do every year, and they still call still me alive? the Welsh Cockney. They still call me the Welsh Cockney when I come there. <laughs> but when I come back, <laughs> Mew says to me, it's like being married to somebody different. I said, well, it's a spice of life, isn't it? 
Well, yeah. So that might be Ed Oliver. It's one of his messages. He's just realised. He's just learned how to send a message on Messenger. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> now it's been a, it's been a great pleasure having you, Ed. Um, and I'd like to thank everybody for turning up. If nobody's got any questions in the chat, um, which I don't think they have, I'll just put. Oh, put me goggles on. Can we see the goblet again? Sorry? Can we see the, see goblet, the goblet again? Can you see the goblet again? Yes, yeah, of course yeah. you can. Came, came in scene, uh, it's actually fallen apart now, Pete. That's the problem. It has actually separated. It's broken. It's broken out already. We've, we've had separation. There is the one piece. didn't break piece. it already. Nah, there's the one piece goblet. <laughs> Hang on, let's, let's be a little bit... No, I can't because it's got a nub on the bottom. There we go. There it is. But it's... Uh, Very nice. Yeah, so you it, can't stand it up because it's not finished? Is that what you're saying? Uh, yes, because I haven't finished it. Because nobody, yeah. wa nobody wanted to spend another desk, 10 desk, minutes desk, desk. watching me desk. take this off and sand it, put the sanding arbor in, and, sure. which I would normally do. Well, strangely enough, there's 100 people still watching. Uh, it is strange. All I can say is thank you all very... Oh, Jacques is there, I just noticed. Hi, Jacques, and welcome. Jacques. And Douglas, all the people that I didn't say hello to, welcome. Uh, some of you have already gone, of course. <laughs> but well, um, who Lewis arrived? Just joined us. Evening, Hi, Lewis. Hello, Lewis. Glad you enjoyed it, Gary. Thank you. Some great voice. Uh, ben Jalman says, a reasonably good, a reasonably good life. Th thank you, Ben. From you, yeah, that is ben. a compliment. It's a compliment, From, yep. Because you really don't know what you're talking about half the time. But, yeah. That's, that's, <laughs> no, actually, what worries me... What worries me with... What worries me with Ben is he does know what he's talking about. <laughs> yeah, don't forget that um, Mr. Oliver will be... Um, is our dartboard behind you there, Ed? Oh, no, it's a Roman dartboard, is it? Or is it one of, one of your coloured wall hangings? Uh, one of my colour ball hangers. Is it really? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where'd you hang it? In the outside toilet? Or? No, it's hanging by my head, isn't it? I've got to say, that's quite impressive. I'm not the toilet at the moment. That is not a green screen, then. That's not, that is the actual piece. My God, that must have taken you ages. No, green screen. <laughs> well, I've got to say, that's a, that's a big piece, Ed. What's, what's the swing on your lathe, then? <laughs> 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 no, I like it. it. Looks very nice. Very nice indeed. Good night, uh, Roger. Good night, Roger. I I will say as well for public. This is for public knowledge that I'm not. Uh, I don't dislike colour coloured objects. I just do don't particularly like doing it myself because uh, I've got no artistic merit in me at all. I thought you were going to say you have no talent there. Well, I nearly did. But I thought, no, that, that would be too insulting for me even to say about myself. <laughs> I, I've used them and I enjoy it, but, you know, I wish I... I'll tell you what, I just I, talk talk to the earworms. I've got to have one final look, because I know it's not in the house, because me wouldn't give it house room. <laughs> 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 it's in the fire pit, just outside the door. Yeah, I'm being honest. Have a look in the bin. Ah, that's... Oh, oh, I, I burned everything in the bin a couple of days ago when I got back from Wales. Oh, well, that's the end of that, then. Uh, yeah. yeah. No, that's not it. That's not it. That's not it. I'm not sure. Ah, there it is. I got it. I found it. This is a piece of Burrell, wasn't it, Ed? That's my son. Go on full screen, Mike, show everybody. No, that's not it. That's not it. Uh, yeah. I've... No, that's I Ash. I can't remember what it was. Yeah, it was. It was a, a real Be ropey fair. ropey piece of wood, the usual usual thing that you do. I didn't use anything decent with you there, that's for certain. No, I know. That's why I said. Phil Butcher said, how, how do most source their wood? Suppliers online, friendly forest owners, timber yards, etc. Um, of course, you all buy them from me. That's yeah, yeah. You, you buy all your all your wood from Ed and decent stuff from somewhere else. He gives all the crap to Mike. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we get the good stuff. Yeah, oh, that's really annoying. I can't yeah, find Phil, that. Basically, all of the above. All of the above. Yeah. Yeah, all of the above. 
you know. Whenever you can, wherever you can find it is a good thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm a lovely wood supplier. Where actually, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I have collected a lot of wood like most people have over the years, and I dry it out, and I'm still using it, you know. But, um, yeah, I've had some nice... Good nice tree surgeon is what everybody wants. Yes. Yeah. Uh, funny Very enough... Good source of wood, keep it quiet. Keep yeah, happy. yeah. Keep them happy. Exactly. That's very true. I'm still looking um, yeah. through through my vast stock of rubbish here. Yeah. Are you sure you got your eyes fixed? Uh, yeah. That's <laughs> just need to look at the screen. Ah, uh, those reading glasses, you see. Read out the wood tunnel says, just let nature colour it, and you just turn it. Exactly. I that now. Who said that? Who said that? Read up. Read up. Uh, I, I totally agree with you, mate. Totally agree with you. It's okay if it's a, if it's a nice piece of wood with a bit of figure or something. Like yes, I agree. Yeah. When you if get you... a, bit, a bit of sycamore or a bit of beech that's got nothing in it, what do you do? So oh, This is the one I did this afternoon. Oh, right. And the wood is wet, or was wet, and it's already started. You can see it's already started to go here. It's got a bit of a bend right. on it. A bit of a bend, yeah. And that is that English wall, white English walnut that I didn't think it's was walnut. Tulip. But it's not. No, it's not tulip, definitely. Yeah, well, look, there's the, there's the tilt on it, look. <laughs> yeah, Phil, but Phil Butcher says, thanks, I was guessing that. Storage is as big an issue, I, w I expect. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it yes. is, yeah. yeah. Yes, Phil. I've, I've got a shed full of wood and another sort of lean-to thing I built out the back, which is half full, so... I got a lot of wood for free, thankfully. Yeah, I, I did in the beginning, and uh, people do drop wood off and so on. So uh, there's lots of wood. A lot of it, I should think, when I actually get to it, although I sealed everything, um, I, I find that it doesn't matter how, how meticulous you are with sealing, you will still lose yeah. up to half of what you put in storage. Um, the other thing is, if you're actually processing a tree, you have... 70 plus percent of either waste or practice wood. Mm. Yep. 30 percent that's good to turn. That's very true. Very true. I, I think with wood, um, with, with free wood, if, if the thing is as well, people say, oh, you know, it's got to be kiln dried and it's got to be air dried and so on, which is fine. But <clears throat> if you've got kiln drying wood, it, it, Pete's got this uh, benchmark, which is great. Benchmark not being a mm -hmm. pun, but his bench has been in his workshop for God knows how long. That is, whatever that measures, is wood, obviously, not metal lead. Um, whatever that measures is the, is, <laughs> is, the term, is the percentage of moisture that any wood that's stored in his workshop is going to go to. Um, I happen to be uninsulated in the garage workshop I've got. And anything around 10%, 8 to 12, if I get 8, I'm over the moon. And I do sometimes in the summer, it's not too humid, but anything that's stored in here over the winter months, etc., will average out about 12 to 13% when I start to turn it. It'll obviously lose moisture when you turn it, um, not, not to the degree that that goblet did, but it will lose moisture, so always be aware of that. Especially if you're doing lidded boxes, don't put the lid on and take it in the house. Don't put the lid on until you've had it in the house and it's got the moisture content it's going to keep. So, uh, yeah, it's... I mean, in the States, in some of the drier states, you know, I'm sure that sort of 4 and 5% is is the... what they would call dry wood, you know. Uh, yeah, some, some states. I mean, yeah, yeah. It varies. And wood, and wood is never, never dry. dry. If you, no. you, no. If you live if in Death Valley, you turn, turn, turn wood and you send, you send somebody, somebody in, in Ireland, Ireland. Yeah. Um, it will gain moisture and change shape. Yes, it yep. will. Definitely. Um, <clears throat> so, depending on the environment you're turning in, you know. Yeah, the wood you turn, Ed, do you, do you, process, that, do you process that yourself? Have you processed yeah. wood? That, yeah. By and large, the wood I turn for me would be chunks of tree. Mm. 
I know all woods chunks, of, but chunks of tree. I don't. I wouldn't turn processed blanks. No. Like I sell, you know, because that's the most expensive way of buying wood. So exactly. You're better off going and getting some cheap wood. Even if you green turn it, part turn it and leave it to dry. It will dry yeah. pretty quickly, yeah. months rather than years. So that's what you should do. Yeah. So that's what I've done over the years, but I mean, I've been doing it 10 years. But I've gone to some stuff that I have wet turned. Um, I think it was eucalyptus, actually. Wet turned some eucalyptus, um, checked it. And then I went, I thought, well, it's been there about four or five months now, so it could be, you know, not far off ready. And it, they, they were in pieces. Without me touching it, I hasten yeah. to add, they just split beyond the Eucalyptus repair. is notoriously bad. Yeah. And like a lot of the fruit wood. So yes, you yeah. Know, you need yeah. to get a book on green wood <laughs> turning and read mm. what light grain woods are normally mm. pretty good if you bring sycamore turns well wet yeah and it holds does. up pretty well ash ash does yeah. pretty well as well ash is ash, pretty ash good, is really good yeah. nice yeah. fun to turn wet wood as well <clears throat> it is it's yeah. the best it's the best fun for me for both bowl turning i mean i love love turning wet wood i love it absolutely love it um the thing is though i think when you uh if you turn something extremely thin when it's wet uh, i might be shot down in flames by the more um uh expert people than myself but yes yeah, the word i was thinking of um they've done my eyes but i think they took a brain cell out i only had one to begin with so i think i'm in a bit of a state um yeah if you turn it very very thin and i mean wafer thin where you can see light through it it's going to move but it's unlikely to split providing whatever you turn whether it be a, a bowl or a box or whatever um that it's evenly turned because that's where a lot of mistakes happen, is that the wall thickness isn't even, it's not the same thickness all the way down, so the thinner bits are going to crack. And somebody said, um, boring everybody here, but it's it's an interesting point to make, if you round, <laughs> if you do a brian and round over the edges, as opposed to leaving them sharp, there's less likelihood of it splitting. Is that yeah, true or not? Nice nah, ruled edge. Yeah. Yeah, you, yeah, I mean... Splits need a point to start, point to start from. from and yeah. and if you, if you, like you turn, turn them even, them even hmm. around about around four, four mil thick, thick, you can turn, you can turn a, a tree that was cold in, in the morning to four mil thick, 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 as long as, as, long as it's four mil thick, thick all the way all through. through. Hmm. And it'll be, and fine. be fine. It might change, it might change shape a little bit, a bit over, but it will be fine. Yeah. I think, sorry to interrupt you, Pete. Um, no, that's fine. What, what I was going to say is it's it's ten past nine. Uh, if you want to hang around and have a little chat after, that's fine. I look forward to that. But I think the rest of the people are falling asleep anyway. So for all of you that are left, thank you very much indeed for coming. I thoroughly enjoyed the evening, enjoyed the banter, um, and thank you for supporting. And I would also like to thank, obviously, uh, what's his name, uh, uh, Barry? But Brian, that's right, Brian from Hartwood Turning. Uh, the Invisible Man, TJ Turning, Terry. Bye, everybody. Uh, thank you, my heels. Uh, and uh, there's two Brians on there now. Sorry about that. I know. That. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Pete, you, I could talk like him too. Pete, <laughs> oh, our, uh, Pete Twisted Trees, goodbye to Pete. <laughs> Cheers, everyone. <laughs> and of course, the one and only Ed Oliver, a good friend of mine, and thank you very much, Ed, for joining us. I do appreciate it. Good night, everybody. Uh, and give my love to Karen. Good night. All the best, everybody. Good Have a great week, and I'll see you as soon as possible. Take care now. Cheers. Bye, people. Bye. See you tomorrow. See you all tomorrow. See you.